You've got it tuned to KEXP at 90.3 FM, KEXP.org, and streaming worldwide, round the world. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I'm so delighted to be here with The Third Mind. This room is filled with so many musicians I admire, and this is going to be such a treat. Welcome so much for being here today.
me out, walk me out, walk me out in the morning. Walk me out, walk me out, walk me out in the morning, do. Mm, that is magnificent. You are listening to The Third Mind live on KEXP.
if you know how Grooving so easy, baby If you know how You don't have to keep Forever slaving Go out and chase Whatever you're craving No, it doesn't have to be
Ah, we're all smiles here. It's the Third Mind live on KEXP. They have two albums out, The Third Mind and The Third Mind 2. We've just heard a song from each one of those. Can't wait to hear what's next. We've had lots of great messages coming in from listeners. Loving this. And uh, several people recognizing Jesse's voice on the first note. Very distinctive and beautiful. Go round the roses 
around the roses Shall he go around the roses The roses Shall he go around the roses We're live on KEXP with The Third Mind. That was absolutely sublime. Thank you so much for that incredible performance. It's such a joy to have you all here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You released your second album, Third Mind 2, appropriately titled in October following your debut in 2020. And I'd love to go back to the beginning and talk about the idea behind the creation of this band. Dave, you said, I had a crazy idea and was looking for musicians who perhaps didn't think it was so crazy. Tell me more. Well, you know, I love a good tight band. I love the Count Basie Orchestra. I love Duke Ellington. I love the James Brown Band. Any band that's tight and they hit their marks, I love. Um, but on the other hand, I also love it when people play whatever the hell they want to play at that moment. Like when I was 12 years old, I saw Jimi Hendrix live twice. And that'll change your life no matter what you do. And the thing about Jimi Hendrix was, besides all the other stuff, when you saw Jimi Hendrix live, you never knew what you were going to get. You would had no idea what he was going to do. If you go see Bob Dylan now, you have no idea what he's going to do. And too much pop music and... Even some roots music and even punk rock and stuff like that is all choreographed now. And so this is sort of just a reaction against that a little bit of, let's do a band where every time we play the song, it's different. You know, there's certain things, certain marks that we have to hit, you know, when Jesse Sykes is singing or when the chord changes. But in general, it's like, let's just get into a room, look at each other while we play live and see what happens. That's very much the way some jazz music is made, and I understand you were inspired a bit by a biography you read about Miles <coughs> Davis and the way he created music. Yeah, when he did his electric albums, um, and even some of the acoustic, but when he was doing albums like In a Silent Way and Jack Johnson and Bitches Brew, they'd go into a recording studio, he'd call up Herbie Hancock and Jack DeJohnette and John McLaughlin and whoever, and they'd record for a week, and then Miles and his producer, Teo Machero, would sit and cut the tapes of these improvisations and they'd make them into compositions. Now, we don't have the budget to do that yet. <laughs> My next question was going to be, is that how you did this? <laughs> well, it's, we, no, we had to do the poor, the poor person's version of it in that uh, we go into a studio. The only thing we agree on is the key. And then we see several times, you know, three, four times after playing the tune. Oh, we have something here that didn't exist before. Played in a certain way that maybe I wouldn't play it with my band or Jesse wouldn't play it with her band or Michael wouldn't play it with his bands or Victor wouldn't play it with his bands or Mark or David Immergluck, Mark Karen over there playing guitar or David Immergluck or other guitars. We just make something that's new and it's new every time we play it because what we just played, trust me, I made mistakes that I've never made before. Congratulations. So that's part of the fun, you know. <laughs> well, like Miles, you created an all-star lineup, so you didn't cut any, any corners there. It's like you were putting together a fantasy draft team here. <laughs> How did you set about choosing your musical adventurous partners in crime? Uh, well, Victor Krummenacher, our bass player. Oh, you take it from here me. Here I am. Yeah. You know, it was a, Dave had this crazy idea. We talked about it probably over a couple too many beers. Um, and I wound up living back in uh, L.A. for a period of time. And he had some time off, I had some time down, and I made some phone calls, and everybody was, av everybody was available on the same day, which in this business never, ever happens. It was kismet. 
It was kismet. And then Dave was like, well, what do we do? And then it was like, well, gee, you know. But Common Ground was East West, the Paul Butterfield song. And we just started there. And it was very much no expectation. Let's just go. Let's pay for a day in the studio and see what happens. And it seemed to have chemistry, um, which is hard not to with like Michael playing drums. You know, the whole thing, the room was on fire. We were qu cracking a sweat the first day. And then it just seemed like, well, let's go. And so informally, we agreed to finish a record and it just took off from there. I just went to another place listening to you perform these songs. I love these particular songs so much. They're just white, right in my wheelhouse. How did you all select the songs that you were going to choose? It's a, it's a hard one, you know. I mean, it's Yeah, just, it, it kind of boiled. I, I wanted to have, it, because it was going to be sort of musically open-ended and improvis, improvisatory, I wanted to have the songs kind of be focused on it. I, I won't say an era, but of a type of song. And they're all sort of out of the folk music, folk blues tradition in a, in a weird way. Even Sally Go Around the Roses was written to sound like a folk song. And, um, and particularly sort of in the mid to late 60s folk rock experimental zone. Because that way we could use those forms as a way of improvising on top of that. And so there were songs that I always loved that, you know, Jesse always loved or Michael or, or Victor. And I would call up Jesse and say, Jesse, you feel like singing Grooving is Easy? And then. It just, yeah, it just, it's so weird because I had a band back in high school, you know, back in the early 80s. And these, I mean, we didn't cover Grooving is Easy, but these were all like songs that I was obsessed with. So it was very kismet yeah i mean it, it, you know just because we were doing another interview and i was saying it's like not to you know pat myself on the back like oh i was so interesting and sophisticated but everyone else in the early 80s was you know into the police and the go-go's and you know whatever was and i was like <laughs> searching the bargain bins for for electric flag records and you know so um yeah, I don't know. I knew this guy for like 20 years and I had no idea that he was on the same radar, you know. So, but but I have to just say no one knows in the audience how cool it is. It's like a Wes Anderson <laughs> film with these media people running the cameras. It's it's beautiful. They're all like in these outfits and they have these like antenna things and it's it's adorable i just wanted to give a shout out to how awesome and like wes anderson if he was here would just be like stealing your look right now you guys are you guys have made our morning yeah it's 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 a <laughs> early experience afternoon. people don't realize there's like one two three four like five or six people lined up right now and you guys are yeah awesome so anyway well, thanks for calling them out. We do have the most amazing <laughs> audio know. and video team in all the world, and the cameras are always pointing out and uh, on you. <laughs> so thanks. Well, Jesse and anyone else, I mean, when Dave and Victor approached you with this idea, what kind of, like, excited or intrigued you about it? Or did you just say, I don't even know what they're talking about, but I want to play with Dave, so I'm going to well, do it. Well, Victor was the one who, who actually made the call, and... Um, not to embarrass anyone or, you know, but of course, it, I mean, I've always been a Dave Alvin fan, you know, and, and uh, just... Um, oh, you say that to all the Dave Alvins. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're, they're, I, I could go on. I mean, my, I want to sort of, my heart wants to explode right now, but just to keep it sort of simple and rein it in, it's just, um, well, you know, I always like to tell the story when I knew Dave back in the day, I was going through some sort of stuff with making some decisions in life about music business stuff and Dave said you know just just always go where the love is you know and um that that it was just a no-brainer to me I mean I love this person and I love these guys of course now I that I've gotten to know them and and uh I just feel that's what music does you know it brings you where it's like a vehicle, you sort of get in it, and it takes you where you're supposed to end up, I think, you know, so I'm just grateful and honored. And, and that, that vehicle is 
that's that's what we're trying to do. Is, you know, like Dave said, you know, a lot of stuff is scripted. And so part of this crazy idea is just seeing if we can have a little community, you know, because I think it's really important right now what this can do. So it kind of gives me chills. And like Dave mm-hmm. said, you know, what, what we just did is nothing like what we recorded, you know, and we haven't played that much and we're just feeling it out. And, you know, if I get a chill when I'm doing it, that's an indication. <laughs> and I just got one. So here we are. Well, this band is anything but scripted. In fact, Victor, I'm going to quote you. And you said, musicians are poker players and storytellers and at best unreliable narrators. (laughs) That's very true. (laughs) I love that. Well, I can only imagine hearing you and watching you perform together and all the smiles going around and this incredible talent. You're all happy you got on this train. Quite. Yeah, very much. Well, thanks for bringing it into the KEXP station. It has been such a pleasure to hear you. And I'm so glad that you decided to take this out live. Of course, the first album came out in 2020, so it probably wasn't possible to tour then. And I wasn't sure if that was going to be another record or if the plan would be to tour. Yeah, well, I had some health issues and I was laying in a hospital bed and I I didn't have a bucket list because I didn't intend to die. (laughs) But I had a list of these are things that I'm going to do as soon as I get out of this hospital bed. And number two on the list was to make a second, third mind record and get the band on the road because I needed it spiritually, psychologically, and uh, emotionally. So, Well, I hope you're doing well. We're so happy that you're here today. I'm here. I got no complaints. Thanks to all of our wonderful listeners for supporting great music like this. You can learn more about us at kexp.org. Make a gift anytime in support of great in-studio sessions like this and all the wonderful things we do, like help you discover great new bands at kexp.org. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get notification every time we launch a new video. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you. Total pleasure. It's The Third Mind live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.